Hello, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. I'm hanging out here in the shade of my aronia berry. So I just finished getting some chores done that were a long time in coming and I thought I would talk about how I get a yield from them and how they're important to me. So in permaculture we have 12 principles and one of them is produce no waste and I take that really seriously. It's an aspirational goal. Obviously I still produce garbage and I don't have a zero waste lifestyle, but I try and minimize it and find a use for everything. So everything is a resource in permaculture. We just need to figure out how to harness it and use it. In a number of my videos, you can see my two standard rescue poodles in the background. And so I've gotten a lot of questions and um, inquiries about how I do gardening in permaculture with two pretty big dogs, medium sized 50 pound dogs, and if I had any tips or suggestions. So in this video, I want to um, talk about how I use my dogs as a resource. I'm probably not gonna answer the kinds of questions y'all had, but I do wanna address how Apollo and Athena can be a resource in my garden. And if you don't have dogs, that's okay. I have an alternate strategy for you to get the same benefits in your garden. So I have two standard poodles. They are rescue dogs and they are seven years old. Um, I'm allergic to shedding dogs. So I've had poodles as long as ever since I was a little teeny tiny kid. And they're great dogs. Um, I do have to keep fencing up and keep them partitioned from the ducks and chickens. That's supposed to keep the ducks and chickens from getting into parts of my garden where I don't want them. But it's also to keep my poodles from attempting to retrieve them because poodles are waterfowl retrievers. So they see a duck splashing in the uh, clawfoot duck pond. Um, they are going to have a very strong instinct to go retrieve that bird. So I do keep them away from my poultry. Now, because poodles are a non-shedding breed, I have to clip them every six weeks or so, at least their face and feet. And I do that myself because I'm not willing to pay a groomer the outrageous amount of money it costs. Um, I shouldn't say outrageous, not in my budget amount of money that it costs. I want my groomer, if I have to hire one, to be paid a living fair wage, but it's not in my budget to pay for um, two standard poodles to get clipped every six weeks. But then twice a year, we do a really big haircut. So in the winter, I tend to let my dogs get pretty shaggy. And then we do in late April, what's called the summer shave down, where I just brrr, uh, clip them um, real short. And it's good for them. They really enjoy it. And it means that I don't have to give them as many haircuts throughout the summer. I can wait until September to give them another big haircut. So the result from that is that I have a ton of dog hair. Hang on a second. It looks like this. And I mean a ton of dog hair. So what do I do with this? How can I turn this into a resource? How can I turn um, an otherwise waste product into something good for my garden? You can see this is Athena who's come to visit me with her real shaved hair. She just finished playing in the sprinkler as her reward and we turned the hose on for her. Give her a couple weeks and she'll look real good. Right now she looks a little bit scrawny. Um, anyway, so with all of this poodle hair, I want to follow the permaculture principle of produce no waste. I've only clipped one dog so far. And the reason that I have only clipped one dog is that I've actually been growing Apollo's fur out and brushing him every day and I am spinning it into yarn and I will have a video coming up about how I do that. Um, also produce no waste, not exactly permaculture, but permaculture principles tie in. So he's not gotten a haircut yet because I need to give him one more good brushing and then he's gonna get his shave. So just Athena got her haircut and it is a ton of hair. So what do I do with this? This is a garbage product, it's clippings. Well, I actually use it in my garden in a lot of instances. So I'm a spinner and a knitter and a weaver, and I have been given many, many um, wool and alpaca fleeces over the years that are usually raw and I have to process them. And inevitably, some people give me these fleeces and they are not good enough quality to use for spinning and weaving. So I use them in the garden and I didn't come up with this idea. It's traditionally been done in Europe for hundreds of years. Lower quality wool that's not suitable for garments or stuffing or other purposes. And um, the sort of short off cuts that don't have a big enough staple to spin are used in the garden. And they have a number of really productive 
and beneficial uses. Poodle hair composition is very, very close to wool. So if you don't have poodles that you can trim, there are lots and lots of sources for low quality wool fleeces. You can often find them free or very cheap on Craigslist, um, or you can buy wool pellets. Totally sustainable, renewable, beneficial resource, making use of a waste product. And it brings a real asset to your garden. So wool, be it dog wool or uh, sheep wool or alpaca fleece is high in nitrogen. It is a good, um, if you look at the NPK ratio, I think it's 912. So it has a high level of nitrogen. It's a good fertilizer in your garden. If you layer your beds with um, sheep wool at the bottom, it helps bring loft and aeration to a new garden bed and also holds moisture. So typically I use dog hair around the base or wool around the base of my pumpkins or other crops that I really wanna um, keep the ground moist and retain water. Wool can hold 20 times its own weight in water and really hold on to it. So you soak it, it makes a great sponge, slowly puts that water into the soil. Now, another reason to put it around your crops is that there are so many slug deterrents on the market and so many slug deterrents in the popular garden myth lexicon. And many of those don't work worth crap or they say they're dog safe and they're really not. They can really poison your dogs. Um, especially if you have a dog like mine, like Apollo will eat just anything. Um, so I found that copper wire doesn't work. Taping pennies doesn't work. Those things don't work. Uh, Eggshells don't work. Snails and slugs have a thick coat of slime that protects them from all kinds of sharp, pokey surfaces. What I found that does work pretty darn well is wool and dog hair or human hair if you clip your own hair. They do not like that hair sticking all over their slime. So it's a deterrent to them. It doesn't hurt them. They find it irritating and they don't want to cross it. So I found a lot of my veggies that are pretty susceptible to um, slug predation that I make sure the circle on the ground is free of slugs and then I wring it in a good layer of thick sheep's wool or dog hair and I find that I don't have nearly as many slug problems because they don't want to get gummed up with all that dog hair tangled in their slime so they don't want to cross it. The other reason that people use wool in the garden is that it is really good at insulating. So if you live in a cooler climate and you are looking to extend your season a little bit longer or protect plants that maybe are like right on the border of being growable in your climate, using a thick mulch of wool or hair does a really good job of insulating and protecting your plants and helping raise the soil temperature a little bit. So I hope that, um, maybe that's useful for you all. Uh, for me, I feel really good about taking a resource that uh, other people see as a waste and using it in my garden to provide nitrogen, slug deterrent. Um, it will break down readily over, oh look, my hands are really dirty from digging in the dirt. Um, nitrogen, slug deterrent, and it will break down readily after a couple of years in the soil so it returns to the earth. It's a totally natural product, sustainable product. It also provides trace amounts of calcium and iron and magnesium. Just a really good, useful, free resource that benefits your garden and keeps things out of the landfill. So I'm going to get back to digging in the dirt. I'm trying to work on my greenhouse foundation this afternoon now that I've finished clipping one of my dogs. And I hope you got something out of this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please be sure to subscribe. That would be that would be awesome. I'm starting to creep up on 10,000 subscribers. So um, I also want to say I have a Patreon. Thank you. I have three new patrons. Thank you so, so much. It means a lot to me. It helps me, able, me be able to put out more videos. Um, and help support my family. So thank you, I appreciate that a lot. If you have topics that you'd like me to cover, please be sure and drop them in the comments. I definitely read all of those. Happy gardening and I'll be back.